Hi, welcome to The Mix, the Teen Center at the San Francisco Public Library. My name is Ileana and I'm going to be your humble host for our latest web series, STEM Challenge Yourself. Some of our most amazing librarians are here to share their creative and fun projects with you. So, I think you're ready for the challenge. Ready? Hi everyone, I'm Vinny and I'm here to lead you through the sticky ice experiment to show you the chemical reactions between salt and ice. I will go through step-by-step -step instructions so you can follow along at home. Uh, after the experiment, I will share with you some more fun things you can do with the information that you learned today and give you resources so you can dive deeper into the science of today's challenge. But first, let's go over the materials we'll need. You'll need one bowl, some ice, some water, salt, and a piece of string. All right, let's get started. So step one, put some ice into the bowl. Step two, pour water into the bowl of ice. You want to pour enough so that it covers the ice or so that the ice starts to float a little bit. And before our next step, a quick question. Do you think you can get the ice to stick to the piece of string right now? Give it a try. Hmm, doesn't seem to be working very well. So let me show you the trick. Step three, put the string over the ice cubes. And this will work better if you wet the string a little first. Now step four, sprinkle some salt over the string and ice cubes. So make sure you cover that string. All right, and step five, wait for at least one minute. Vinny, while we wait, can I ask you some questions? Of course. What kind of salt would work for this? Any kind of salt? Oh, yes, any kind of salt will work for this experiment. You can use regular table salt, you can use kosher salt, or if you wanna get a little bit fancy, you could even try some pink salt. I like the pink salt, that would add some color to it. Uh, what about the string? Is there a particular kind of string that would work better or that wouldn't work at all? Well, string that can absorb some water will work the best. So something like yarn or cotton twine will be good. You could use a shoelace, you could use a ribbon. Uh, if you have something like a plastic string, that might not work so well. And one more question, what about the ice cubes? Any kind of ice? Uh, so any ice cube should work for this experiment, but I suggest you try it out. Let's see if it works with big ice cubes, small ice cubes. Do you think crushed ice would work? So that's something more you can explore. Now, it seems like it's almost a minute, so let's just count down that last five seconds. Ready? Five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one. Now, step six, pull up your string and see the science at work. Ta-da! Very cool. So what is happening here? Why did the salt make the ice stick to the string? So let me break it down. Liquids, like water, all have a freezing point. Now the freezing point is the temperature where the liquid becomes a solid. For water, this temperature is 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. 
when you add things like salt to the liquid, to our water, this lowers the freezing point, meaning you have to get the water colder than 32 degrees before it turns back into a solid. Now, if you were watching carefully um, in that minute that you were waiting, once you sprinkled the salt over the ice, the top of the ice would have melted a little bit. So that is what lowering the freezing point does. Now, because we lowered the freezing point, that means now the water can get even colder than 32 degrees. And when that happens, the water around the salt, um, uh, around the salt and ice cubes refreezes just a little bit over the string, letting you pick up the ice cubes. So, cool, huh? Definitely. Now, what's next? Another really easy experiment you can do to feel for yourself the power of salt and ice is just grab another bowl, put in some more ice cubes. So we're setting this up just like the first experiment. And then pour in your water again. But this time, don't add salt to this, uh, to this bowl. If you dip your hands between the two bowls, you can feel for yourself the temperature difference. Now, this reaction is also how you can make your own ice cream at home. But unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. So until next time, keep experimenting. Back to you, Ileana. That was some stone cold science. Thanks, Vinny. I love the cliffhanger about the ice cream at home later and that you could use household ingredients to learn about chemical reactions like freezing and below freezing. Don't forget, you can check out sfpl.org for more STEM Challenge Yourself series challenges. Thanks.